Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Our topic today is contextual data is the key to modern IT operations. My name is Russ Elsner. I'm in the office of the CTO with ScienceLogic, and I'm joined today by Bowen Simich, the founder and principal analyst of Digital Enterprise Journal. Welcome, Bowen. Thank you, Russ. So you just published a study, the 17 areas shaping IT operations. How did you do this study? What was the methodology behind it? So we have this process for ongoing data collection for uh, our research reports. So over the course of the last 10 months, we collected uh, research insights from just over 2,500 organizations globally. And uh, in the study itself, we're not just presenting these findings as a raw data, but actually putting this data in uh, some actionable frameworks. For example, we identify top 20% of our overall survey pool based on their performance and use their strategies and actions to identify some best practices and also provide some actionable recommendations to readers of our research. What were the three or four most interesting pieces that you think would apply to the uh, ScienceLogic audience? There's a lot going on in this market and obviously we collected a lot of data. I think if you want to summarize that in three or four key topics as you mentioned, I would say one, and this is one of the messages that we want to sell, uh, send with this study is context is king that a lot of organizations are struggling with making their data more actionable, and we covered that in, in a study quite a bit. I, think, I would say the second area that's really important is the whole notion around cloud performance management and a lot of new trends that we saw, we're seeing in that space. The third one we can probably identify is uh, being able to do intelligent automation, but being, being able to do it in scale and how important that is. And I would say the fourth one is more horizontal. It's really around how uh, different technologies and new technologies are crossing the chasm more faster and how they are impacting uh, technology landscape, and how they're impacting the strategies around IT op operations in general. So that first one sounded really interesting. Let's talk about context. What did you find? It's interesting that if you look at, uh, for example, the amount of data that organizations are collecting and performance improvements, there's zero correlation in, in a research data be between those two. That's not to say that uh, monitoring uh, uh, IT performance is not important, but what's more, even more important is actually putting this data in the right context. That more than 70% of organizations that participate in research are reporting their uh, IT performance data is not actionable. And that's the re uh, reason for that is the context in that data is being presented, the, uh, that organizations are trying to pull this data from a lot of different sources and trying to put it in a, uh, uh, present in a way that you can do something actionable with it. It's really interesting. I, we run into the same thing. Um, if you look at the history of IT, the sort of first phase was data silos. Lots of different data, lots of different silos, didn't really uh, touch. Then there was a big push toward, and that didn't work clearly. Then there was a big push to big data. If we could just get all of this data in one place, you know, big data will solve this, and that hasn't worked. And then what I see is that there's a, there's a, a, a new trend where we say, okay, if we apply big data and machine learning, then that'll all be peace. But I think that the, your key finding aligns with what we see, is I think even that's missing something and it's the context. Is unless the data has context, it's hard to make any sense of it whether you're using machine learning or other analytics. Without context, the data's, I think to your point, unactionable. So it's very, very interesting. We see very similar things from our perspective. And I think, you know, as I mentioned, there are a lot of interesting stories in, in the study and, and there's a lot of stuff that we cover. But I think, you know, one thing that people should keep in mind uh, uh, after reading the study is uh, this market that used to be around collecting more data, as you mentioned, monitoring in general, is really becoming analytics, automation, and data management game. Right. Yeah, automation, well I know we'll probably talk about this a little later on because I saw this in your study, but uh, you know, in the end, I think the end goal is automation. That's what everybody wants to achieve, and so part of this is how do you get towards automation? I suspect we'll go deeper into that as, uh, a little bit later in the, in the talk. Right. Why don't we talk about your second point? You talked about cloud management being another, another interesting area of your survey. Uh, sure. So, one thing I've uh, seen in research is that, and you, you guys know this very well, uh, being one of the experts in this area, that uh, uh, cloud management from the introduction to the enterprise was received pretty well. It was uh, uh, the organizations understood the value proposition and was getting a very good traction. It was growing pretty fast. Uh, this wasn't really uh, across the board. You still had some industry verticals that were not adopting cloud for whatever reasons they had, could be security, could be compliance, could be uh, cultural reasons. And we are seeing actually that not only that organizations are now seeing less or fewer barriers to adopt cloud services, and we're seeing more uh, of a across the board adoption, if you will, but we're also seeing them bringing more applications and services to the cloud and bringing some new technologies. And if you look at the, uh, the speed of adoption of the cloud in the enterprise, that, that really wasn't followed by the speed of 
uh, innovation when it comes to cl uh, cloud performance management technologies. And that what it causes is actually that you still have a lot of organizations that are that have a different set of tools and capabilities for managing their on-premise hosted services, managing hybrid cloud, managing public cloud. And there's really no single platform. So if you try to, going back to the previous point that we talked about, try to correlate the data from different sources and try to figure it out and put it in the actionable context, it becomes a major challenge. Yeah, that definitely is, uh, I see a lot of that myself. In fact, I've, I've said frequently that I think one of the original sins of IT was this idea of data silos. That you had one tool uh, and one set of teams on database, another one on network, another one on server, another one on storage. And these data silos prevented a holistic view. And I see some organizations looking at cloud and they're treating it just like a new silo. And I think those are the organizations, or at least the ones I see, they're going to have the, the biggest challenge getting the efficiencies. The people who are doing um, the most sophisticated and sort of the best work with cloud are the ones that think of cloud just as an extension of the broader IT ecosystem. And that has to be more than just one cloud. And it might be multiple clouds. In fact, it will be multiple clouds. But if you have your different policies and procedures and teams for Amazon and different policies and procedures and teams for Azure, I think it's going to be really hard to achieve the agility and the efficiency that cloud provides. And so, you know, I, I've always thought that taking a more holistic approach of the entire technology stack across clouds, private, public, multi-cloud uh, is really a part and part. And it sounds like that, that aligns with what you saw. Definitely, definitely. And also if you look at, for example, you know, how organizations are addressing this challenge, it's, it, it, data really shows that uh, uh, issues with managing cloud performance are not going away anytime soon. And actually, the complexity of this issue is just going to be increasing as there are using cloud in more use cases, uh, uh, putting more, to your point, more applications and services to the cloud, but also finding a more strategic role for cloud in their enterprise as they try to get uh, uh, all of these uh, issues addressed. Uh, it's just going to become uh, even more complex to, to be dealing with it. And uh, for that reason, as organizations are thinking about their strategies now for managing cloud performance, they should be uh, also thinking ahead and looking at at least a few years uh, uh, into the future if they don't want to play a catch-up game. Absolutely, absolutely. Another topic you mentioned was automation. I think you said automation at scale. Can you talk a little bit about what you saw in the survey around automation? Sure. So if you look at, for example, performance of top performing organizations in, in the survey, as I mentioned, our methodology and uh, being able to do a cutoff at top 20% based on key performance indicators, and look at and see what these folks really have in place and what makes them, uh, uh, allows them to outperform their peers. And you look at the list of capabilities that they are anywhere between 50% to three, four, five X more likely to have in place. What a lot of these capabilities have in common, they are automation capabilities. And we're seeing, uh, there is a major uh, change that we are seeing in the market. We did a similar research, say seven, eight years ago, and we asked similar questions about the interest in automation capabilities. Numbers are pretty low. Part of the reason why organizations are now more open to deploying uh, uh, automation capabilities, they are doing a better job of building the data lake, if you will. And uh, even though we talked about the need for more context before, they are doing a better job of managing their data. So they're trusting their data now to put it uh, to work and be able to automate processes and, and tasks based, based on um, um, data they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the questions I wound up asking, or I've, I've heard people ask, uh, if, if the business comes to you and said, you know, IT, we have an idea that would double our revenue, but we need to increase IT capacity by 5x. A lot of IT organizations turn around and say, well, I'm going to have to hire a lot more people. And that's just not going to happen. There aren't enough people. You can't hire them quickly enough. So really the answer to be able to say yes to the business is automation. So how do you build an automated system that would allow you to drastically increase capacity without increasing headcount at the same rate? And that's all about automation. One of the things I find is that automation a lot of times is, is about provisioning or people think about it as, as uh, remediation, but there's a lot of areas to automation. It's tool to tool, it's a release process, tool chaining. It's, you know, how do you get to a lights out operational environment where the, the system just works? You know, problems are detected, problems are found, problems are resolved without having a human at the keyboard trying to solve them. And that's obviously, you know, a long-term goal, but I, th I find that the organizations that are doing the best uh, in best serving the business are the ones that have really thought through this and are building processes that dr are driven by automation. You brought up a very interesting point when you uh, were talking about the whole approach of let's uh, hire more people. Uh, what we found in the study that's not going to work for m multiple reasons. One you mentioned already is if you go to business folks and ask for a budget for something like that, that's probably not going to happen. 
But the second part is what we found in a study that 78% of organizations that participated are saying that throwing more people at the problem is not going to solve the problem. So even if you have resources to do it, it's not going to work. The second thing is if you look at the what's, not, what's happening at, from a technology perspective, 88% of these organizations are saying that the amount of alerts and metrics and events increased over the last 12 months. So to deal with this type of velocity of data that needs to be processed is just not humanly possible, even if you can hire more people. That you just have no choice in many of these use cases but to uh, add some autom automation capabilities. What's, what I mentioned also, it was very important, and that's where the scalability part uh, comes to play, is it's important you can, you have, you can do this at scale. So uh, being able to deal with more, more events and more metrics and more, uh, more complex architectures that are generating more data. Uh, automation is a very important piece, but uh, the scalability also uh, becomes more and more important. So automation is definitely the key to the agility that everybody wants IT to have. Right. So the last topic you mentioned was around the pace of technology innovation. And it sounded like it was uh, the, the, the pace to adopt new technology keeps increasing. Can you maybe talk about what you found on that one? Sure. Uh, one data point that I thought was really interesting is that we did some trending analysis going back uh, seven, eight years. And we look at the, how much of a driver for adopting new IT operations solutions is change of technology. And uh, what we saw over the last two years, that if you look at the, the trend line, it goes way up. That, uh, and there's for a couple of reasons. That there are, technologies are crossing the chasm more uh, faster now than used to be a case. If you think about how, for example, smartphones entered the enterprise. We talked about how cloud entered the enterprise. It took a while. Mm -hmm. it took a while from, for example, for smartphones from having two guys in a BlackBerry for becoming an enterprise initiative. So with things like um, containers and hyper-converged and serverless computing be examples of this today? Right. If you, uh, for example, if you think about microservices and containers and you look at uh, 12 months ago, it was, was a cool new technology that uh, had a lot of promise. It wasn't a major management challenge. And you, people were not buying new technology solutions just to manage that. If you think about, for example, IoT, it looked like something that could be interesting one day, but that eight, nine months, 12 months later, that you have the, the whole enterprise is changing because of that. It's funny you mention that. I, I remember uh, just two years ago, I was spending a lot of time going to customer sites and telling them what containers were. This is what a Docker <laughs> container is. This is how it, you know, this is what Advantages is. And now all of a sudden, everybody's deploying containers so that the time it took between, you know, no, people didn't know anything to the widespread adoption has been uh, really rapid. Whereas if you go back to VMs, it, it felt like it took a lot right. longer for that to go mainstream and become widespread. So I think your point that new technologies are coming down the path quicker is really important from a, from a strategy on how do I build an IT organization that can adopt new technologies. I don't know what it's going to be six months from now, but I need to build a system that can adopt it six months from now because my business demands it. Is that kind of in line with Definitely. what you're talking about? Definitely. And there was a data point in the study that was talking about the uh, 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 kind of acceleration rate around uh, deploying new IT operation services. That you know, for something that took eight, nine years to be replaced, for example, you know, ten years ago uh, or so, now it could be three years. Mm -hmm. That organizations are buying something in three years, two or three years later, realizing. This is not going to work in these new environments. And uh, when we bought it, it was a new innovative solution that was actually outperforming everything else in the market. And all of a sudden becomes outdated, not because these vendors are not investing their technology solutions and not updating them. It's because they, uh, 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 the level of innovation that's entering the enterprise from the technology perspective is, is much faster than, than uh, taking the same strategy approach that you mentioned, which is what we bought five years ago uh, uh, should probably be good fit today. So this is interesting because it kind of has, it, it says two different things that I think are worth talking about. One is from a people and process perspective. If every one of these new technology ways becomes its own data silo with its own tools, its own specialists, and its own operations processes, we're back to the original problem that we talked about with just pockets of data that don't have context. We know that that's a problem. Um, the other part that it seems is that the biggest challenge from a, from a, uh, a management perspective is not necessarily the adoption of those technologies, but actually building an organization that can adopt those technologies rapidly. So I don't have people that specialize in this, but I need people that can learn it quickly. And so it talks a lot, of, it seems to suggest the processes and the people and the um, 
and the overall just discipline of the organization has to just accept this new agility that is that is coming at them. Definitely. I mean, if organizations are deploying these uh, new technologies in, in in by adding more, more silos, that's never going to work because you know we talked about that the seventy one percent. Uh, number of organizations saying that data is not actionable. If they, uh, they keep doing that with these new technologies, that number will go up to 99 percent, probably. Right. Uh, and uh, I, I think you know you're spot on when you mention about the, the changes that need to happen on the organizational side, and the processes, and and uh, how um, how different uh, parts of organizations align when it comes to using technology, from infrastructure to developers to application services, and business. And I think you know taking a more uh, vertical approach, if you will, when it comes to deploying new technology solutions, that they can actually touch each of these areas of IT and business and be able to provide value. It's probably the key even to that, but also the key to some of the other things that we talked about before, such as con context and automation and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely these things, we talked about context and, and the uh, cloud management and automation and sort of the pace of innovation. It feels like all of these things actually intersect and affect each other. They're all part of a, a larger fabric of the, the sort of the reality of today's IT environment, um, but it's also, this is what we're going to use in order to accelerate and adopt these te uh, technologies quicker and transform to the digital economy and sort of all the things that everybody wants IT to do, these are both the tools, but also, the, the, but they're not magic. Right. And so it's right. going to be uh, a disciplined approach and a very thoughtful approach on how to build organizations and technologies to be able to do this. Boan, thanks for participating today. This has been a great conversation. Uh, we really appreciate your time here. And thank you very much for joining us and being part of this overall discussion. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.